So hello, uh, I am Ishan Mishra, this is Lang Sheng Chu and this is Francisco. Our project is titled uh, Scalable SVMs for Applications in Computer Vision. So in our project we had uh, two threads uh, and we focused on two parts of vision where scalability is of particular relevance. The first being object detection and the second being facial attribute detection. So for the first part, uh, it's very uh, relevant in robotics and first person vision like say when you're using Google Glasses. So you have tons of objects, you have tons of detectors, but in the real-time detection scenario, you cannot use all of these, mainly because of power, time, and memory constraints. So the exact problem is of model selection, where given the entire superset of models, you're supposed to select a smaller subset, which will give you a reasonable performance, but with your given budget of time and memory constraint. So we tried multiple approaches, but in this presentation, I'll focus on the sparse modeling approach. So in this approach, what we try to do is that from the superset, we try to compress it into a smaller subset, and this subset uh, minimizes a Frobenius reconstruction error. And intuitively, we think that if two detectors are uh, close enough in the Frobenius norm sense, the responses on the images will be similar, and that was the intuition going with this. So we tried our results on the Pascal 2007 dataset, and uh, for the bus category, these are the sort of models we ended up selecting. And you can notice that within, of 260, we end up selecting about 26 models. And of this, you can notice that there's not too much redundancy in terms of the models we're trying to select, which basically says that we have a decent basis when we're uh, compressing our data. And in terms of average precision, uh, the baseline is a random baseline. So we end up uh, picking models randomly. We did 50 such trials, and we uh, pick up the best performing uh, random subset. And you can see that the sparse modeling does reasonably better than the random baseline. And it's much, much faster uh, than uh, the particular random baseline, basically because the convex optimization is very uh, straightforward to solve. OK, so our second problem is facial attribute detection. And um, given an image, you want to detect these attributes. The one can tell you see that the machine learning make you look like bigger age. So a standard approach for doing this. <laughs> So a standard approach for doing this is a nonlinear SVM. However, a nonlinear SVM needs to maintain a large number of support vectors, and it's expensive while you're training and testing a large-scale data set. And as an alternative, you can use the linear SVM. It's scalable, but it fails to capture nonlinear concepts. So in this study, instead of using uh, in implicit feature mapping, such as the traditional kernel methods, we and to find a mapping Z, which is an explicit feature mapping, such that after the mapping, the data is more easily separable. OK, what we saw this. We tried different techniques, uh, starting from random house creatures for translation invariant kernels. This was proposed by Rahimi in 2007. And it's basically, it looks like a Monte Carlo approximation of the, of the, inverse of the kernel using the inverse Fourier transform. And we try also the fast version proposed <coughs> by Sarlos, Lee, and Smola that uh, reduce the time from linear to, log to logarithmic time, or the computational time, to get the expansion. Then we try explicit feature mapping for homogeneous kernels, such as chi-square and intersection. That basically works by making the kernel periodic, such that the, the, the spectrum of the kernel become discrete. And then we can get a explicit feature map. Then we can combine these two techniques that give that we try to trace the generalized RBL technique that we can get a specific feature mapping for the exponential chi-square kernel. Here you can see substituting the chi-square distance by the Euclidean distance to the power of two. So the computational co cost of this is D and D, which is where capital D is the order of the expansion of the R of the of the randomized feature. N is the order of the expansion of the chi square kernel, and a lower D is the, the dimension of the original data. And working with this, we figured out that using fast food on this kernel, we can speed up the exponential chi square kernel to a, lo a logarithmic time, so we can use this in f real time in vision. And this is a contribution, all the hard OK, so to better set up, we implement all these methods and validate them on five data sets. The first analysis is the reconstruction of the kernel. So the x-axis is the that degree of extension, and the y-axis is the reconstructed kernel. So basically, the more expansion you use, the better the kernel is reconstructed. And the second is to show, just to show, give an idea about the approximation in the spectrum of, of different kernels. And when, while we have this uh, reconstruction in the spectrum of the intersection kernel, it it fails somehow in the lower band and, and the peak. So we use a uh, met metropolitan casting sampling to make it better. 
the value that is we test it on a basic assets, we, we, we have 20, uh, 22,000 images. Using traditional RPF, this takes more than one day, and using RPF, it takes only one and a half minutes. And more interesting, we can observe, uh, okay, so <laughs> we're going to have a live demo in our presentation, and if you don't know, if, if you need to shape or not, please come and try it. And uh, we thank Alex for his uh, discussion. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.